Hello, my name is Professor Eric Lobel, and this is RAD 226, Image Quality Characteristics. In today's lecture, we will go over the following. Radiographic density. We'll talk a little bit about what the definition is of that. Go into some examples and then see what other parameters or influencing factors there are that will govern and change our density. To the same extent, we will talk about radiographic contrast. We'll define contrast, look at some examples, and then see which factors or parameters, when adjusted, either more or less, will change our radiographic contrast. Following, we will look at radiographic detail. Radiographic detail will be defined, examples will be given, and again, influencing factors will be analyzed. Finally, radiographic distortion. We'll take a look at its definition, its examples, and some influencing factors. Please note, the majority of this lecture will be based on screen film environment, unless otherwise noted. What this means is the majority of the lecture is based on the use of a conventional or traditional cassette with an actual piece of radiographic film in it. There will be times where I diverge just a bit and try to give you a little bit of what these objectives would be like in a digital environment. Let's continue. Radiographic density. Radiographic density is defined as the amount of blackening present on an area of the radiograph, or on the radiograph as a whole. Basically, radiographic density is how dark the image is. If you take a look at the image on the left, image A, it's much lighter than image B to the right. Thus, simply stated, image A has a lower density, while image B has a higher density. Again, if you take a look at these lateral skull x-rays, I think most of you would agree that the image on the left is light, the image on the right is very dark, and some might say that the image in the middle is optimal. However, Density, as well as contrast, distortion, and detail, are all subject to the opinion of the radiologist. Well, to start off, I want to give you a little bit of a background in terms of what the controlling factor term means. When you say primary factor or controlling factor, we're talking about one major parameter, things that we've learned about in the past, such as KV, MA, time, that can be adjusted to actually affect our radiographic image. The primary factor or controlling factor is chosen because it will change the parameter of interest, in this case density, but will affect all other aspects of the image to a lesser extent. In this case, the primary factor for density is milliamperseconds, or mass. There's a direct proportion between mass and density. If you increase mass, density will increase.
a primary factor is what should be chosen whenever possible. There are other ways to affect density, and we'll be going over these shortly. I'll give you one such example. If you reduce your SID, your source to image distance, this in turn will create more photons not dying or dissolving in the air and thus hitting the image receptor. More photons hitting the image receptor would certainly increase the density. But this is not the parameter of choice. You don't want to adjust the density of your image by manipulating how far away the tube is. It doesn't make any sense. It's not easy to figure out. Whereas mass, as we've learned before, you double the mass, you double the density. You half the mass, you half the density. It's mathematically very easy to figure out how to make changes to density when utilizing mass. Some of the other parameters may affect density. However, it is a lot harder to utilize. I'd like to talk about now many of the factors that can affect density. As we discussed, MA will definitely increase density and it's directly proportional. Time certainly will increase density.